Abner gets turned into a rutabaga. One fine afternoon, Abner, traveling gopher, was casually walking down a dusty road when hunger pang struck him. Abner stopped, removed his thick glasses to relieve some pressure on the ridge of his nose, and looked around. Abner noticed, not too far off, was a farm. Abner made his way towards the farm, intended to find a fresh feast waiting for him. Abner arrived at the fields, and he had his choice between lettuce, strawberries, and carrots, and obeying his palate, Abner went for the carrots. Abner sat on a nearby log and enjoyed his snacks, eating one after another. The gopher was as happy as he could be without a care in the world, until one of the carrots from the pile stood up and stumbled its way towards him. Monster! The carrot, who was wearing long dangling earrings, a jewel-encrusted headband, and frayed cloth, hissed at the unsuspecting gopher. You know not of what you have brought upon yourself. Shocked and apologetic, Abner apologized. I apologized. I was just hungry and needed a nosh. Fool, you just needed to nosh. You just destroyed an entire gypsy clan, the carrot reprimanded. I guess I will go grab some lettuce then, Abner said, still chewing on a carrot. The damage has already been dealt, and in return you shall reap what you sow, the gypsy carrot told, while muttering what sounded to be gibberish under his breath, before lying down and shriveling up. How do I always place myself in these predicaments, Abner questioned, as he rested his head on the log. Feeling tired, he needed a nap, just a little break. Abner woke from his nap, expecting to be bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, but he felt abnormal. Abner had an unsettling sensation in his stomach and thought to drink some fresh water that might cure his ailments. Abner remembered passing a pond right up the way, so he ventured towards the water. Abner approached the water and bent over to take a drink, and what he saw was not easy to swallow. Instead of seeing the brown and gray furry face Abner had grown to love, he saw a purplish, waxy, bulbous being. Abner was no longer a gopher. Abner was a rutabaga. The gypsy carrot, Abner shouted, going into hysterics. The carrot cursed me. I need to get back to my normal self. This is horrible. Abner ran about looking for anything that would help, but he had no idea what would reverse the curse. Maybe a rival clan of gypsy, Abner thought out loud. Maybe a shaman of sorts? In Abner's panic, he did not hear that he was approached from behind. He felt rapid breathing down the back of what used to be his neck. Abner spun around. Upon the completion of his turn, Abner was greeted with the face of a rabbit. I am glad you are here, Abner commented. You wouldn't happen to know of anyone with mystical powers in this area by chance? The rabbit stared at Abner, twitched his nose wildly, not uttering a sound. Uh, excuse me, Abner readdressed, but I am in need of help, and rabbits and go f er, no. Abner stopped as it came to him that the rabbit was not there to help, but rather to snack on him similar in the way that Abner was chomping on the carrots. Abner turned what was once his tail and ran as fast as a rutabaga could. The rabbit took off after Abner, snapping bits out of Abner's back mid-stride, Abner screamed out in agony, trying to scope out a safe haven to hide. But the field was free of proper refuge. As Abner ran for his life, he tripped on a mound and fell face first. He decided to turn over and look his attacker in the eye as it feasted. But when he turned, all he could see was foliage. Abner was covered, and the rabbit hopped away unknowingly, leaving him behind. You're welcome, a voice came from nearby. Who? Who is there? Abner questioned, his mind still racing from the chase. Your savior. A carrot stepped forward, covered in tribal war paint. The name is Rudy. And who might you be? Abner, Abner answered. Abner, Rudy repeated, questioning the name. Abner does not sound rutabagan. Where do you grow from? Not knowing how the carrot would react to hearing he was formerly a being who feasted on his people, Abner decided to play it safe. Uh, my parents were not really into traditional names. They hung out in the weeds for quite a while, if you know what I mean. I do. My parents uprooted me 
and moved me to a contained above ground community. They took to the pot real quick. I cannot stand users and beatniks. No offense to your spawners, Rudy said. None taken, Abner schmoozed. I see my parents as nothing more than cedars. It would be best to relocate before the rabbits realize it lost your scent and double back, Rudy declared as he turned and ran. Feeling like his best chance of survival were with the intimidating carrot, Abner followed Rudy to what appeared to be an underground commune. Abner entered the commune through a series of tunnels burrowed in the soil and entered a fantastically built village with wondrous architecture. We are dying breed, Rudy blurted out to break the silence as Abner marveled at his surroundings, harvested and slaughtered. This village is what we have left of the resistance of free radicals. This is magnificent. Do you live in the pyramids over there? Abner pointed off to miniature pyramids lining the extent of the village. Not live, Rudy explained. Of our fallen, those who cannot be composted or recycled, we build into food pyramids. Recycled? Abner asked. Yes, we make furniture out of the dead. It is better than letting them go to waste. Rudy gestured to a couple of turnips carrying a large table. That veggie table was just crafted out of their cousins. We also have potato couches for the true couch potato. I am astounded. Abner stopped short as he tripped over and fell to the ground as he was gazing about. First day with the new feet, Rudy joked as he helped Abner up. Actually, first day without mine, Abner answered honestly. I wish I had time to give you a better tour, but we are preparing for battle at the moment. I was just on my way back from a reconnaissance mission to find what we can learn from the leak information system when I ran into you, Rudy explained. Tonight, we launch an all-out assault on the rabbits. If you are trained in battle, we could use another body. Do not feel obligated. Ever fight a rabbit? Actually, I've killed a bunny before, Abner revealed. Not my proudest moment, but I was in better shape back then. I do, however, owe you my life, so I will fight amongst you. Plus, I'm a little bitter about almost getting eaten earlier. Bitter? Rudy questions. I thought Rutabaga were Swedish. Never mind. Here we are. Abner and Rudy entered a hut, and there stood a fine assortment of vegetables talking amongst each other about the battle. We must attack while they sleep, a tomato screamed. There is no honor in that, a potato yelled back. They hold no honor. Why should we? A mushroom added. Attention, Rudy barked. We have been planning for too long to change the plan of attack now. We attack at sundown, and we all grew in the soil. We should have no problem fighting dirty. You all knew what you were getting yourselves into. Beat, run down the schedule one last time. Right away, sir. Beat started. At sundown, we send in the scallion battalion for the first strike in the resting grounds of the rabbits. Their speed and agility should be used to inflict many non-fatal wounds to slow them down. But we should not suffer many casualties. We do not anticipate that the rabbits will stay asleep for long, so once the commotion is in motion, we shall release the potatoes, beets, and tomatoes into the mix. Their strength should be best match the weakened rabbits. Once the rabbits start to tire, the carrots, garlic, and mushrooms shall charge and try to deliver as many finishing blows as possible. And we have a newcomer, a rutabaga. He should be useful, Rudy added. Can he be trusted? The potato sneered as he approached Abner. He is vegetable. We are united under a common enemy. Rudy spoke boldly. We need all the help we can get. Rutabaga do not grow in these parts for just reasons, the potato shouted as it stormed out of the tent. Another potato, with a softer feminine look, stepped up to Abner. Do not mind, Starchy. He gets this way before battle. The second potato then followed the first out of the hut. Pay no mind to them, the mushroom said. Starchy is as mean as they come, since most of his family was lost to the potato famine. His wife, though, Atapa. She is as nice as they come, a genuine sweet potato. Fungerous. Backgrounds of the warriors are irrelevant to us at the moment, Rudy reprimanded. The mushroom, keep your head in the game. I shall go check our weapons one last time, the garlic stepped up. Excellent. Take the rutabaga with you. 
give him a quick introduction to our weapons, and find one that he is comfortable with, Rudy ordered. The garlic nodded and took Abner to the weapon storage. I do not have to call you Rutabaga. I could call you by your given name if you would like, the garlic commented to Abner as he rummaged through crates. Abner, Abner announced. What may I call you? Vlad Garlack, the garlic declared. Ever use a blade of grass? Abner was handed a sword tightly woven from sturdy grass blades. Abner took the sword and practiced some maneuvers. This works, Abner nodded. Rudy said I have an uncommon name, but Vlad Garlack seems out there as well. The name was not always Vlad Garlack, the garlic said with remorse. I had to take the name after I was bitten by a vampire, and it has become me. I thought vampires hated garlic, Abner remarked. They do. It was accidental, Vlad Garlack explained. I was being worn as a necklace by a young human, trying to ward off vampires. Unfortunately, the vampire prowling the night happened to have poor eyesight, as well as a cold that impaired his sense of smell. He closed in on the girl, went to bite, and sunk his teeth into me instead. Ever since then, I've been a vampire and decided to go by a more vampiric name. Are you affected by garlic the same as a normal vampire? Abner voiced concern. More so, Vlad Garlack revealed. I hate myself. I cannot stand being me. I would not look myself in the mirror, even if I did have a reflection. My only solace is that I may die tonight on the battlefield. Abner did not know what to say, so he stayed silent. The two of them went through the weapons and checked them and assured they were battle ready. After a thorough inspection, the two reported back to Rudy, who was finishing up his prep talk to his troops. And he ate the whole thing, Rudy finished, and was met by a round of applause and cheers. I would now like our religious advisors to say a prayer for those of us that will fall tonight. Please allow the collared greens to warm your spirits. Rudy walked out from his podium, and the vegetable priests approached. Weapons are in tip-top shape, Vlad Garlack whispered to Rudy. Excellent. The time for the vegetables to rise is upon us, Rudy smirked. Arm the troops, and then we march. After the inspirational speech, the vegetable army grabbed their weapons and fell into order in front of Rudy. Abner stayed close by to Vlad Garlack as to not get in anybody's way. When all of the soldiers were present, Rudy raised his sword and led the march. The edible army marched in silence until they arrived to the battlegrounds. They heard the muffled snoring of the rabid beasts mid-slumber. Some shivered in fear, others rallied in angst, but Rudy stayed calm. He glared into the bushes where the rabbits camped and signaled for the scallion battalion to unleash their fury. The scallions valiantly ran into the rabbit nesting grounds, out of sight to those who bravely waited for their time. I do not hear anything, Fungorus nervously stated, after some time passed. We should have heard some commotion by now. Something is askew, Rudy said. Prepare the potatoes, beets, and tomatoes. The three food groups rallied on Rudy's orders and began for the rabbit grounds. Just before they entered the bushes, the tomatoes stepped aside, and the potatoes and beets continued on. Moments later, the screams of vegetables could be heard. Tomatoes, what are you doing? Rudy shouted, This is war, what are you doing? One tomato spoke up. We are not with you anymore. We have made a deal with the rabbits. We were to deliver them a feast, and in return, they were no longer going to eat tomatoes. Cowards, Rudy screamed. Traitors, we are brethren. We were never brethren, the saucy tomato scoffed. We tomatoes were ousted by the fruits and the vegetables alike. No one will take claim to our kind. This is about survival. Tomatoes, let's go home. The tomatoes turned and headed off while the rest of the vegetables witnessed a shameful display. The tomatoes marched into some lightly colored brush that started to rustle at their arrival. All the leaf-like beings around them started to shuffle and started attaching themselves to the tomatoes. Hornworms, run, the tomatoes yelled, but it was too late. The tomatoes had too been double-crossed and they were sold out by the rabbits. A slight glint came to Rudy's eye as he witnessed some fine comeuppance. But 
did not take any further moment to enjoy. Everyone get in there. Give it your all. Show them your raw, uncooked power. The entire brigade ran through the bushes to an unappealing sight. The rabbits had been waiting for the vegetables with empty bellies. All the vegetables from the two previous waves of attacks were in shambles, covering the ground in tattered parts or hanging from the mouths of gnawing rabbits. Abner saw Beat grasping for life in front of him and ran to his aid. Beat was barely recognizable with the damage he was inflicted. Abner could not believe such an atrocity before him. This can't be Beat, Abner cried. Abner bent down to console the dying bloodied Beat, but Rudy grabbed his shoulder, preventing him to go any further. Be careful, he stains. The battle continued on, with the vegetables being severely outnumbered and overpowered, but still they persisted. Abner tried his best, but fighting in the body of a rutabaga is not an easy task for beginners. Rudy and Fungress, however, were as skilled as they come, swiftly running from rabbit to rabbit and cutting out aortas and tracheas. The battlefield was becoming overcome with gore, matted with fur and vegetable shreds. It looked like a macabre tossed salad. After many hours of combat, the rabbits began to back off. The vegetables claimed the retreat was a victory, but a keen observer could identify that the rabbits had simply eaten their fair share of opponents and were full and no longer saw the need to be there. Either way, the night was silent and Rudy tallied up the casualties. Many brave lives were lost, reducing the vegetable resistance by great numbers. Abner, tired and bruised, was grateful to have not seen his death. He made his way through the mess and stumbled upon the body of Lad Garlax, lying lifeless. He was a tortured soul, Abner mourned, but this is the outcome he desired. Abner shed a tear for the garlic, and in front of the surviving army, Abner transformed. Abner took to his original shape of a gopher. The vegetables screamed in horror at the thought of allying themselves with the enemy. First the tomatoes, and now the rutabaga, Fungarus shouted as he steadied his sword. I feel like I am over boiling water. I'm getting so steamed. Not wanting to have to fight his former army, Abner tried to explain himself. It is not what it seems. So, you are not a gopher, turned into a rutabaga, seeking refuge with the vegetables, fighting with the vegetables, just to break the heart of the vegetables upon seeing you turn back into a gopher? Rudy asked. Well, if you put it like that, it is exactly what it seems, Abner confessed. But I learned a valuable lesson. Being a vegetable was rad. Well, not completely rad, just radish. But the way you took me in and accepted me, I changed because of it. As Abner tried to win over the crowd, the shaking of leaves in the bushes caught everyone's attention as a hideous purple eggplant emerged, toppling its way towards Abner. I fight alongside you, and you unleash this upon me? Abner yelled in frustration. He is not with us, Rudy declared. The eggplant is neither egg nor plant. It is an abomination. Abner prepared himself for the equally sized eggplant to attack. The eggplant clumsily lunged itself at Abner, who quickly evaded, took hold of the eggplant, and ripped it in half. The vegetables watched in awe at the spectacle. He surely would have finished us off, Fungarus solemnly said. The gopher saved us. Like I was trying to say, Abner pleaded, some of my closest friends were corn. One had an entire corn army at his disposal. And for me, he was always there to lend an ear. I am not a bad gopher. And as a result, I vow to ever eat another vegetable. From this moment here on, this gopher is a carnivore. We are indebted to you, Gopher. I mean, Abner, Rudy thanked. If you ever find yourself in these parts again, do not hesitate. Do not be a stranger. Abner hugged the vegetables and walked away a changed Gopher. He tried to turn over a new leaf of becoming a carnivore and gave it his all. He was doing well until a scenario involving a chicken nugget, a hospital, and a stomach pump, and then Abner decided that it may be best to stick with a normal Gopher diet. But he did try.